Hello, YouTubes. Welcome back to James Recommends. It's been a long week. It turns out that my camera sound card is just effective. So right now I'm recording this on an iPad sandwiched between two copies of Antoine Lavoisier's Elements of Chemistry because I knew that having two copies of that would come in handy someday. Anyway, uh, today I want to talk about a game called Freedom Planet. Uh, oh, and if this works for you guys, let me know in the comments down below, because the iPad front-facing camera is notoriously terrible, I can only record in 720p, all that, but it would be way easier for me to take on travels than trying to haul the other, all the other camera gear, so if this is even remotely close to something reasonable to record on, I'll get a little stand, I'll get a better setup, this will be better, it won't be great, but be better, uh, so let me know. Anyway, back to Freedom Planet, because you know, that's what I really want to talk about this week. Uh, if you like games like Sonic, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, you should probably try Freedom Planet. Uh, Freedom Planet is... I'm going to go with definitively. I may get a little bit of flack for this, but I think it's definitively the best Sonic experience that I have gotten in quite some time. Uh, it even originally started as a Sonic project. But eventually they want, decided they wanted to sort of develop their own IP and go a different direction. But you can see, you can see that influence um, really carry throughout the whole piece. And it uh, not only pays homage to Sonic, but really uh, owes a lot of what's going for in terms of feel to those Sonic experiences. Uh, it captures a lot of that, but there are some really interesting differences, and as game designers we can learn a lot by uh, putting two experiences which are supposed to be similar side by side and looking at how their differences can really affect the play. Uh, one that I think was fascinating to me is this is has the same like large expanse levels, but even more expansive, even more branching paths, even more layers of level than you would expect from a Sonic game. And so they've got this really complex, really heavy level design. Uh, and I think as designers, it's fascinating to take a look at it as you play through. Uh, there are things that it certainly adds to the game. Uh, having more additional paths, having more ways to break through always means that there's something to discover, which was a big part of the Sonic games. But at the same time, these massive levels uh, also are somewhat cumbersome. If you don't already know the layout, there are plenty of times where they can interrupt the flow by uh, you just running to a dead end or not knowing really where to go next or simply looping back to where you were before. Uh, so it's just one thing to look out for. The thing I really want to talk about today, though, is... Uh, Freedom Planet does a remarkable job at capturing that sonic feel on every level, but they made one design choice that, uh, to me, was a fascinating way to approach things. They opted to include a attack button. So rather than Sonic games, where your attack is your jump, is your roll through people, which this sort of has a little bit of too, but... It, Primarily, the way you attack in this game is by pressing a separate button. So your character kicks or hits things with their motorbike or whatever they may do. Um, and it was a fascinating choice to me because Sonic really depends on uh, fluidity of motion, right? Uh, the play is supposed to be this one continuous fluid experience. Um, a lot of a lot of actually why Sonic came to be originally was to demonstrate the technology of the Genesis and to show that they could deliver this type of fast-paced motion and keep it fluid in a way that the old Nintendo could not. Um, and But part of how we do that, right, is by never interrupting the character's flow, by having their jump be their attack. They can keep moving and their attack is a continuous part of that movement, right? By having that spin through stuff, they're continuously pressing forward, preferably at a faster and faster pace, uh, while continuing to engage in the combat. Here, by having a separate attack button, you slow down some of that pacing because you have these moments where you miss an enemy or whatever, you go back, you have to go kick them, you stop to better attack them in place. Uh, this falls away somewhat as you become more of an expert player. Uh, 
you can regain a lot of that fluidity. Once you learn the levels, once you memorize a lot of the stuff, a lot of that comes back. But especially when you begin this game as a novice player, the sort of continuous movement that you experienced in Sonic is broken up by this choice to include a separate attack button and have your attack be something that is not just 100% of the time part of your movement as well. But by having a separate attack, they allow sort of a little bit more variety to the attacks, which allows them to create a wider variety of enemy types that uh, either require a certain way of attacking them or counter certain moves, all this sort of thing. So it does allow them a broader range of enemies. Uh, so as you go through, just look at that trade-off, understand what that one simple choice did to play, not not even to mention the fact that it requires them to create a bunch of animations that Sonic could get away without. Um, but look at what it does to fluidity and see if you feel like the um, balance in fluidity is outweighed by the creativity that they're allowed to sort of express in their enemy types. And uh, as you do so, also think about some of the development costs that come with that just one simple choice, because that was the most fascinating thing to me. Uh, all right, so that's it. I mean, honestly, if you like Sonic, if you've been looking for one of those games, Frame Planet isn't perfect, but it's it's really good if you if that's what you've been craving and you just the more recent Sonics just haven't done it for you, you should try Freedom Planet. So this week, James recommends Freedom Planet. See y'all next week.